one and no drama, and I got nothing but drama. Why is freaking Junior? What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Today is the day we officially start in Harry Potter number four. Cuz, are you ready? No, the question is, am I ready? Cuz, the way, so I'll be starting Goblet of Fire today, and I decided to, I wanna vlog my entire experience. So, if you don't follow me on like TikTok and Instagram, that's where I make like the shorter versions. It'll be like under 60 seconds. I'll still be posting those, so make sure you follow that. But sometimes I have like more in depth. Ooh, it, but you a Harvard uh, graduate? You know, let me think. What my glasses at? Fuck. I can really become one with those glasses, hello. But uh, sometimes I be having more thoughts to share and I'm like, I'm not about to sit here and make a, which I could, but I'm about to sit here and make a doggone 10, 20, 40 minute doggone TikTok uh, sharing my thoughts. So I thought this would be a fun place for me to share it. So a uh, fair warning, baby, there's never no organization for Key. If you coming for like the aesthetic shit, nah, you're gonna get that raw, real shit. You just gonna get, you gonna get me. That's just how I like to show up on all my accounts. So that's what you're gonna get. But where Fishy started Goblet of Fire, honestly, going into this book, I feel like I need to share my thoughts. Going into it, I was obsessed with Prisoners of Azkaban. If you haven't read it, there's gonna be spoilers in this, um, in this damn video, so you might wanna leave. But I remember making a video and I was like, I was enjoying it, because I was like, I, I love, right now, I would say, it's Prisoner, Prisoners of Azkaban, the first Harry Potter, and then the second one, because the second one was just dragging for me. Even the movie, like I still enjoyed that movie, but I was kind of dreading watching that movie because the book, it was just, maybe because I was on the hype and the excitement of the first Harry Potter, like I was finally like opening up to this new world that the second one didn't do it for me. But that third one, that third one with Scabbers, which that blew my mind. And then Lupin, like everything that I thought I knew would happen would not like did not happen and it just blew my mind because i was like i can't imagine y'all being fucking kids reading shit like this my parents i would have lost my fucking mind i would have towed up my house screaming just there would be no sanity left in my mind reading something like this as a kid so shout out to y'all and i under i get the fucking hype with me i haven't even started book four i haven't even finished the series but i get the fucking hype i understand it i even broke down and got emotional uh, a couple of days ago because i was like when people kept saying thank you to thank you i couldn't really fathom why they were saying thank you until i had to wrap my mind my mind around how like i was obsessed with twilight as a kid and like if i was to find somebody reacting to twilight Team Elwood, bitch, I would lose my shit. Cause it brought me so much joy, especially like in dark times or times where I felt like shit was going hard in school or with my family. So I get it, I understand, and I'm happy that I can be a a, a vessel of light to y'all, bringing y'all. And I'm happy that I can bring a, I can be a vessel of light to y'all, especially with something that y'all cherish so much. So trust me, I'm grateful, I appreciate it, and I understand. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get into this vlog and let's see what's gonna happen to my cousin Harry. Hello, girl. <laughs> Already, I'm kind of glad that I started this book in the damn morning time. Bitch, am I gonna need to sleep with a nightlight? Cause I'm reading the story about Frank. I don't know who that is, but my real question is, who the fuck is Wormtail? It better not be Scabbles. But I can only put those two together. I'm like, Wormtail, Wormtail. He was a cornball. He wasn't a worm tail, but that could be him too. So yeah, who the hell is worm tail? But let's keep on reading. This is already giving me a different vibe than the first, the couple other ones. So this shall be interesting because I get scared easily, girl, real easy. You say boo, girl. Penny drenched, and not because of kitty purring, baby. Because I didn't piss myself because I'm scared. So <sighs> be with me, baby. Hold my hand in this time, girl. And this trying goblet of fire time. Hello. I love how I'm smiling now. Every time I start a new book, I be smiling by the end of it. I be in shambles. So let's see if we get that same effect. <laughs> Hello. Also, I just want to say that Ron and Hermione, the whole gang, they are ultimate friend fucking goals. The way they was trying to put Harry on the diet with Dusty, Harry immediately, he said, uh uh, let's go on and get this feather. Let's get the fucking writing. Because <laughs> I will be eating good. I feel you. Once you go to Hogwarts, 
You come back to that shit? <laughs> he not rocking with it. So for uh, Hermione to send him sugar-free um, food was cute. And then for Ron's parents to send them like the cakes and the meat pies, I love that. But I thought it was funny when he, he was like, <laughs> Hagrid sent him some homemade rock pies. I don't know what Hagrid be doing in the kitchen, but stop. Go take care of, oh. can't take care of Bugby no more. But I don't know what Hagrid be doing in the kitchen, <laughs> but it be it reminds me of myself. And I should never be in the kitchen, baby. Too cute. Hello, baby. Save it for the jokes. Save for Hagrid, baby. Stay outside the kitchen. That's where you belong, period. But, yeah, their ultimate goals. And honestly, I'm really excited to, like, dive. Ah! Cuzzo! Look, fuck them dusters. You ain't got to stay up. You ain't got to stay with them no more. You can come live with me and look. You ain't even got to pay rent. You ain't even got to pay rent. And you ain't got to do homework under the sheets no more, player. And I feed you good, baby. You ever heard of that thing called DoorDash? Yeah, they ain't got that shit in the wizard world. Hello, now. Now you know what I'm talking about. But also, I was finally looking at the cover. Normally, I don't know why I don't pay too much mind to like covers of books. But I was looking at it, so I'm curious to know where that blonde girl at. Let me find out if you're gonna if you're gonna be dating my cousin. Make sure you come talk to me and get permission first. But there's like a blonde girl. Yeah, who is she? Then I'm like, is that supposed to be Snape? Girl, you know he stay ready. Look, he looking over his shoulder trying to see what Potter is up to. Ready your wands, head ass. Um, and then who is that? I'm guessing that's supposed to be Ron, or is that Tom Riddle? Girl, he was fine in the movie. I right, pop e, but we gonna see. So um. Yeah, I'm curious to know who these characters are. But Harry looks more the most like his character, like from the movie, which is cool. Yeah. And can I just say, I've read about a good amount of characters, but Harry's sassy level is always top notch. For him to be a kid, the way I would have got popped in the mouth so many times, the way he be talking back, he say, I don't give a fuck. Baltimore, the, the man who thou shalt not be named and took my parents. I ain't got shit else to, I ain't got shit else to care a little for at this fucking point. He be so sassy. Literally, you know, the Dustlings, they get on my nerves. They said, you stand here in the clothes Petunia and I have put on your ungrateful back. Harry said, only after big ass Dudley finished with them. He didn't say the big ass part. I have to add that in. My cousin, he be polite sometimes. He said, so he said coldly. And here go Uncle Vernon. I will not be spoken to like that. But Harry wasn't going to stand for this. Gone were the days when, when he had been forced to take every single one of the Dursley's stupid rules. He wasn't following Dudley's diet. And he wasn't going to let Uncle Vernon stop him from going to the Quidditch World Cup. Period. Okay. I said in that other movie when Harry literally got mad at uh, Aunt Petunia or whoever it was. And he started walking outside. I said, oh, bitch. I remember I dreamed about running away as a kid. I said, he really out here doing it. <laughs> but see, you had that little magic bus to come save you, baby. I would have been still outside. Not if he could help it. Harry took a deep, steady breath and then said, okay, I can't see the World Cup. Can I go then? He said, can I go then? Only what? Only I've got a letter to Sirius I want to finish. You know my... Uh-uh! Uh-uh! Not him! <laughs> Not you threatening them with serious, and they still think he the fucking one to kill everybody. He said, I got a letter to do. So if you ain't gonna send me, let me call the big dogs, baby. Let me, let me, Expo Patronum! Yo ass, hello. Or Expecto Patronum. I, I gotta, as you can see, I haven't graduated from Hogwarts yet. This is only my first year out here. I gotta practice my spells. Hermione, you wanna come teach me? He had done it. He had said the magic words. Now he watched the purple, there we go, all over Vernon's face. You're writing to him, aren't you? Well, yeah. It's been a while since he heard from me, and you know, if he doesn't, he might start thinking something. Harry. I know we family, because the way you run game, the way you run game! Teach me your ways, po' favor, baby. It's in that blood. This is probably the sassiest male character I've ever read from and this man is only my boy only 13 years old. I can't wait to see him get older. Ah, my boy HP is going to the Quidditch World He's going to the Quidditch World Cup. Yeah Vernon. Hey HP I'm not big online but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And key salute 
Hello. Baby, I mean, can I just say, I just had Chick-fil-A and I'm currently reading in my car. I am loving it. I feel like they're gonna be my favorite characters, Fred and George. <laughs> Cause I always feel like you just need that, that one or two siblings that could cause, that cause ruckus in your family. And I feel like Fred and George is that. They always give their mom a heart attack. But to me, I'm like, oh, they just boys just wanna have fun. And I feel like I was always like that in my family too. I'm like, life's too short, baby. Let's throw, a, let's play a few pranks on each other. Let's live a little, hello. <laughs> but that did give me some detention, so hello. But now I'm on a part where they just introduced Cedric, and I know people have told me Cedric is playing my baby, <laughs> Edward Cullen, but I don't know anything about his character, so I'm excited to see, and I don't even know what house he's in. So yeah, I'm excited to see how my boy uh, Edward do in this book, or see what happens to him in this book. Baby, update, we are hold up, dog. I'm out here looking like Miss Potato Head. Bitch, somebody throw me a wig, Pope Favor. Hannah! You don't need it no more, girl. That Disney check is done. Ooh, all right, all right. Anyways, girl, it's been a couple of days. I didn't want to Florida. I'm back home. I've been, uh, I sit last night and like this morning reading, so now I'm currently on page 230. But bitch, I gotta give me some wine, and we gonna, I gotta share my thoughts, because I haven't talked to y'all honestly until, I haven't talked to y'all since probably what? Maybe I was like 50 pages into it. So, a bitch, a lot's happened. I, I feel a lot of certain ways about certain people. And uh, now I'm starting to realize I can't be reading the comments because every time I say, oh my God, I'm a fan of somebody, people be like, who gonna tell her? Who gonna tell her? Just wait, just wait. But uh, thankfully nobody's really shared any fucking spoilers. So, shout out to the Potterheads for that. But yeah, let's get some wine and then let's sit down and chat before, it's like 8.30 right now and I'm honestly, gonna spend the rest of the night just reading because bitch I went shopping I did one thing about me during the day I always like to do a lot of just I don't know I'm just one of them people I can't stay put and so when people are able to just binge a book they say like I haven't moved I just like sat on the couch and finished this book without getting up which couldn't be me I think I have to reward myself when I read 20 pages just like not moving but to do a whole book is crazy so I read this morning and then I had to film some brand deals. I'd be ready to get that shit over with. Want the money though, hello. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, I, I appreciate it, I'm grateful. Let's get this wine. And I'm only on glass one, so let's hope tonight don't get crazy high, like how I'll be on my lives. Lord have mercy. Okay. Oh, actually, and this is like a, so I told my friend that I've been doing a lot of red wines and like, I stopped doing it because I was like, ugh, even though I love red wine, it's just so heavy and especially like, Drinking at all during December, more wine, and trying to drink it now in January is just—it's not hidden. So I've been trying different white wines, and I wasn't a fan. And then I realized, I guess I'm a Chardonnay girl, and this is by Simple Truth at Kroger's. It's not too sweet, just right, smooth enough for me to sip, but also smooth enough to chug. Hello, cheers to that, bam. So yeah, um, I think this might just be my go-to. And the bottle was like $14. I can endure it a little under 14%. Yeah. Now you talking my language. Now you talking my language, hello. Okay, baby, as you can see, I specifically got this journal to do all my Harry Potter. I've done book one, took all my notes. I heart Harry, hello, to the day I die. I'm over here, ending Voldemort. That's from book one. So I've taken notes. Let me know if y'all ever want me to go into detail about it in a video over all my notes, as well as I annotate. But let's just get to, uh, where's book four at? Look, look at this, scabbers ain't shit. People be like, people be thinking I'm a scholar when I'm writing notes if they see me on live. Bitch, I just be writing <laughs> the simplest things. Scott, scabbers ain't shit. I heart Snape. Oh, he might got a funky attitude, but I heart Snape, hello. I know that's true. Book four. Okay, so these are my book four notes. So uh, let's get into it. Let's flip the camera. First, I want to get into my girl Winky, as well as Mr. Oh, Mr. Diggory. I'm not a fan of him. But as well as I want to get into what's their name? Oh, Mr. Moody. So these are my notes. We're going to discuss this right now. And then we're going to do some more reading. Okay, first off, I want to start by saying, girl, I'm, I'm loving it. I, I honestly, I don't know what it is, but I already feel like. It's getting harder for me to say it because I feel like I'm gonna regret it. Something gonna fucking happen. But as for now, me being 230 pages into it, I'm rocking with Professor Moody. I love when I tell you I died fucking laughing. 
first of all, he's a real one. So I died laughing when he had turned Draco into a ferret and he was like, I don't like when people try to attack people behind other people's back. And then I love how when Professor T had saw him, Professor T was like, didn't we tell you we don't do transfiguration? Professor Moody was like, it's too many peas. But Professor Moody was like, oh, I think I heard a two, uh, I think I heard a thing or two about that. He is unfazed, unbothered, even when Draco tried to act like he was gonna go snitch. Professor Moody was like, baby, I already know your daddy. We like this, it ain't nothing. And tell him I'm keeping an eye out for you with my good eye. Hello. So I love book Moody as well as, um, I always like to say this, but I feel like every book it gets better with the Weasley family especially. Like I feel like J.K. Rowling does a great job with whether it be the banter between Fred and George with the mom or just the whole sibling aspect as well as Harry, Hermione, and Ron. Like, it feels so fucking real. Like when I see Ron, Harry, and Hermione arguing, sometimes I think about my best friend. Like that bitch be getting on my nerves sometimes, but I love you. Same with the siblings. I was always the one trying to cause trouble. Girl, just not giving a fuck. Giving my parents a headache every damn day. So I relate to Fred and George on that. And I just feel like the author did an amazing job with that. And just seeing all the characters' relationships develop through each book. It's a, I know why y'all was obsessed. I get it. I've already said that multiple times in the books, but I truly get it and I love it. I appreciate it. I'm in awe by it. I can go on and on about that. As well as, oh my God, what is that? Shout out to my boy Dobby. <laughs> my boy said, Harry Potter, free me. Dobby is free. My boy Dobby done got that sock and he is acting brand new. And I am not mad at all about it. Hello. Girl, that really, it blew me when Winky was like, first of all, all the elves act weird, but I understand, girl. You go, you go, I, it was hard for my black ass to see it, but they the S word, they the S word. So I understand, but yeah, they are definitely a character. I can't wait to see this book turn out in the movie and I'll do a separate video reaction for that. But I can't wait to see how this Winky character look because Dobby, first of all, seeing him was, it was different. It was eye opening. I was, I don't know what I expected, but it was eye opening. And that's another thing I can say about JK Rowling. I'm like, baby, that imagination, there's authors that can write spice, kudos to them. I still can't do that. But when it comes to the fantasy, especially with JK doing, I'm like, what type of imagination did you have when you thought of Hagrid, this big, this big guy, when you thought of Bugbeat, this interesting animal creature, like all these different creatures she created in her mind, it's just, I'm bewildered. <laughs> and if a black person is using big words, they mean it, hello. So I love that. And um, who else can we say? Oh, Edward Cullen Daddy, not rocking with Professor, not Professor, all them damn professors I can't keep up with. I'm not rocking with the Diggory. I don't like how, Mr. Diggory, I don't like how he talked to my boy Harry Potter when they was in that damn forest after the Quidditch Cup or even before the Quidditch Cup. So I got my eye on him. But also, I feel like the people I be having my eye on, it be, it be distracting me from the people I really need to keep my eye on because I'm starting to learn that JK be having a plot twist at the end. So everything I'm suspecting, I got my little spidey senses on nine times out of 10. I, I really don't even know if I'm being, believing those spidey senses in the next couple chapters, but we gonna see. Oh girl, and the last thing I gotta say is shout out to her body. Girl, my people needed her back in the day. The way she don't play, the way she talking to um, Percy and all of them talking about some slave labor, slave labor, slave labor, pay them. That's what I'm talking about. Hermione not, she not for the BS, that S-P-E-W, I'm rocking with it. So I'm here for it. I'm excited to see how that unfolds. At first when they kept saying she was eating fast to go to the library, I said, not this bitch doing this time turner thing again. <laughs> I mean, not to call her a bitch, that's my cousin too. But I'm like, don't tell me she really out here still trying to take nine, 12 classes while everybody else taking a couple. But should have known she was always for the cause, period, girl. Hermione for the people or Hermione for president, hello. But yeah, those are my current thoughts right now. Um, I even made a TikTok scene right now. As y'all can see from the smile, I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling like excited for God with a fire. I really have no like leads or theories right now. I honestly just go into books just open and I just, I let the plot, I let the plot twist pimp slap me, baby. Oh, you need to be going in my mouth and not on the couch. Bad wine. But, um. I feel like I'm one of them people, I just get surprised easily. So I never like to guess anything, cause I just know my guesses ain't gonna leave me nowhere <laughs> but to wrong.
I love how caring. <laughs> Harry! I love him so much. This boy is 13 going on 30. The way he be having a, <laughs> he be caring his worries, his pains, his traumas, and everybody else's. The way he told Sears Black that his scar was hurt and now Sears was like, I'm on the way. And Harry's so worried, he's like, what if he gets caught? It's my fault. I can't sleep. Bitch, it wasn't me. The only time I was not able to sleep as a kid is when I knew that ass woman was coming. My mama be like, wait till your daddy get home. I'm like, nah, mama, you can do it. You can do it, please. Your hand might be big, but it ain't as strong as he is. Hello. So yeah, I love Harry so much. Girl, I got this like my baby. Which I be calling y'all animals, I ain't got no pets just yet. But which I be calling the, the, the animal support system, comfort support, where y'all can just bring that shit everywhere, even when I'm eating food. That's how I feel about this cup, girl. Well, when it's with wine. When it's with water, girl, I'll leave it anywhere. When I got wine, you coming with me, baby. This my child, baby, and I'm a protector. I'm gonna stick beside her. Or actually, this my man, and I'm gonna stick beside him, hello. Are you gonna stick beside me, period? Girl, not them finally describing, not them describing um, the owlery. And because I was like, why, why was Hedwig so mad when Harry was stressed out yet a fucking game? Either Harry be fainting or he just be stressed the hell out. <laughs> My boy barely get peace. We're gonna have to give it to him in this book or another one. But when Hedwig brought him serious black note, Harry was like, You're gonna have to go to Harry was like, I don't have anything for you. You're gonna have to go to Allery. <laughs> And apparently, Hedwig looked at him like, nigga, please, what the hell you talking about? So now they describe me where it's thousands and thousands of owls all in one room. And so now Harry needs to return a fucking note to Sirius. So now he got to do some begging and pleading. I'm loving it. He said, Hedwig got his back to me, as Hedwig should. You should have gave my boy a damn smack. Especially, they was out there, they was in the Great Hall. You know they stay eating good, girl. I'm I'm a I'm a college dropout, but I'm telling you right now, if my university of high school or hell middle school was eating good like that, baby, I would have had a hundred percent attendance award, baby. Never missed a day. Chicken, steak, roast beef, damn. <laughs> Talk to me in the belly. Hello. Talk about a freshman twenty. That would I would have added another zero over there the way they was eating. No limit? Yeah, I like the sound of that. Hello. Trying to have my car say that one day. Hello. Or at least your grandpappy car say that one day. Hello. Girl, now they breaking my heart that Harry and Ryan are like beefing right now. I feel like it's like my cousins being in an argument. I don't like it. I don't like when a family is beefing. Ugh. Baby, I don't think I need to be reading this book in public. Cause I'm literally having to cover myself with my jacket. Cause it's just, I don't even think I got to the sad part, but it breaks my heart that Harry always going through this shit by himself and now him and Ron ain't friends and that was like his backbone through everything. I think I need to go home. It is literally Friday. I should be out shaking my ass, taking shots of tequila. <laughs> and I'm crying at a coffee shop. This ain't okay. Baby, I didn't have me a fucking day. So last I talked to y'all, <laughs> I was crying. Now I laugh. Whenever I go through my little tears, I start to laugh at myself. But I was crying over Harry and Ron. I'm currently on page 347. But I was crying at the coffee shop a couple hours ago. Then I had to go get me a margarita. Maybe that's why I'm laughing now. I'm feeling a lot better. But, um, so now I'm on a part where they're getting ready to do like their first uh, tournament thing. But my current thoughts is, I actually got a lot of thoughts. My current thought is, it actually break my heart. Like, I think the reason why I was crying because I've, I understand and I've gone through friendship breakup, which I'm sure by the end they'll be friends again. But just experiencing a friendship breakup, especially when Hermione's like, come on Harry, just go talk to um, Ron. And Harry's like, I don't miss him, I don't miss him. But deep down, you know, Harry misses Ron and vice versa. So it's just like a friendship breakup just, it'd be hurting more than a fucking relationship. I don't care what they say. Or maybe because I haven't been in a lot of relationships. <laughs> Hello, but so that's one of my things also like I'm very iffy with I know they said I can pronounce it I wrote in the back of my book because I don't have my notepad. So I put 
I know Moody, they said Moody was almost killed. And right now, because he was talking to Dumbledore and um, uh, Professor Moody too. But I'm like, I don't know. I'm iffy about Moody. But every time I'm iffy about somebody, bitch, I'll be wrong. So I ain't got too many. Um, I don't got too many assumptions about him. Right now, he is cool. And I like that he helped Harry Potter out. Like when it came to um, uh, Harry was scared about the dragons. And he was like, think about what you're good at. Which is a part that I underlined. Because I be feeling like they be having inspirational shit up in here. <laughs> Maybe I just be reading too much into it. But as you can see, I, I took a lot of like notes or underline. So right here, I put play to your strength. Because I love how uh, Moody was telling him that. He was like, play to your strength. And Harry Potter, uh, I love my cousin. He was like, I, I have, haven't got any. Moody said, excuse me? You got strength if I say you got it. Hello, let them know. We need words of encouragement. You got to have people that speak encouragement to you. Hello, what are you best at? And then that's when they started talking about Quidditch and flying. And it took Harry, it took my cousin Harry a while to fucking put two and two together. But he realized he was best at flying. Hello. So that's one of my theories. I will say I love, I'm curious about this person. I can't even pronounce the name. Karkaroff, whatever. Especially because he's a death eater. So I'm like, so you was riding in a, you was shooting basketball with my boy Voldemort. Not my boy, but <laughs> the doggone demonic Voldemort. If y'all related or if you're a death eater, that means you support Voldemort. So I ain't rocking with that shit. But yeah, I'm currently on this page. Let's see. This breaks my heart. Here we feel oddly separated from everyone around him. It was a state of nervousness. He wondered whether he might just lose his head. Oh, I feel you, player. And start trying to curse everyone in sight. Girl, and Harry, one thing about him and Hermione, I don't know what part that was, but I was like, my cousin is very sassy. Was it this? It was a different page I had where he was like, oh, there we go. Let's see what it focuses. But Hermione was talking. Harry said, Hermione, will you just shut up for a bit, please? <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate. And I, I don't know if people ever want to see my notes, but when people will be scared to like annotate, I'm like, girl, just write and say whatever you want. This is your fucking book. Like if you do want to write in it. But in a sense of like, there's no correct or wrong way to annotate. So I'm like, I'm gonna need my cousin to relax, which I understand you 15 years old, gotta fight for your life. <laughs> Look, that's, that should be Harry. That should be Harry Anthem. All my life I had to fight. Cause seriously, he came out the womb having to fight Baltimore. So damn. But uh that me I swear I really be believing <laughs> me and Harry fucking related. Look at this shit. I'm starting to realize <laughs> sometimes I don't pay attention when I'm writing, but it is funny. What'd I say? Cause what was it? Oh, he was seriously considering for the first time ever just running away from Hogwarts, baby. We all been there as a kid. But I literally said, Come on, cuzzo, you got this. If you look delusional in the dictionary, you will see a picture of me. A hundred percent. Hello. All right, let's get back to reading. Come on. Girl, not Dobby getting a job at Hogwarts. <laughs> if I wasn't in public, I'd scream right now. I'm so hyped. I'm so hyped. Say it with me. S P E W S. P E W. <laughs> I'm on a part where Harry just, uh, where Hermione just brought Harry to like the Hogwarts kitchen. And my boy, Dobby is there. My boy said, Dobby likes work, but he want to wear clothes and he wants to be paid. Period. I ain't mad at Dobby. I am not mad at Dobby. What's wrong for wanting a little change? He said, I just want something in my pocket and I ain't trying to be looking butt ass naked. This ain't Jesus' days. This is not Jesus' days. S B E W. I'm here for him, man. He got me hyped. Baby, Winky ain't playing. My girl, literally. <laughs> I'm loving Winky and Dobby interaction. Winky is a ride or die bitch. She does not, she refused to give up uh mr crow she said you was not insulting my master <laughs> and then this part right here had me dead here was like you just need a little practice practice wiki said you was ought to be ashamed of yourself dobby talking that way to your master look at dobby they ain't my master no more <laughs> they this is hilarious that these are house elves <laughs> oh you is a bad elf dobby tell him winky tears linger po i actually feel bad for her but she free it's a good thing maybe eventually she'll come around to him she said my poor mr crouch what is he doing without winking he is needing me he is needing my help is that how my people used to talk back in the day 
Maybe I shouldn't be laughing. I'm only a couple centuries away. Oh my God, all right. It's giving wax, cuzzo. It's giving wax, do we got a brother? Cause I'm trying to get down with that, hello. <laughs> the way I damn near choking my saliva reading when they was finally announcing who she was going, who she was at the ball with, and it was Krum. The fine one that can't even pronounce my bitch name, can't even pronounce it. <laughs> she out here struggling, she said Hermione. He said Hermione? Hermione. She said, fuck it, you fine, baby. With the accent, it don't even matter. Hello. <laughs> but I'm about, how far am I into it? About 447 pages into it. I'm enjoying it. I am starting to get weary because I'm so happy that Ron and Harry, I thought they were going to go the whole book just beefing because, bitch, one thing about me, bitch, I can hold a grudge forever. But I'm glad Harry was just like, forget it, forget it. Let's, let's keep it moving, let's keep it moving. I was like, ah, not the squad back together. That made me so happy. But um, now I'm really starting to get weary. I'm over here. I literally went to the store and got a whole whiteboard. So it's gonna happen, cause I'm like, I gotta figure out who the hell put my boy name into the goblet, but also who's trying to get rid of him, aside from Baltimore, there's somebody else trying to get rid of my boy. So I done got a, I got a whiteboard, and tonight we're gonna figure this out. Before I finish the book, we're gonna figure this shit out. But yeah, I just wanted to do a little update right now. Oh, because why is it making me, ah? Uh, why is it, I feel like I'm about to cry again. Why is it making, and I know I haven't, people are saying I still haven't got through yet. I'm on page 454, but why is it making me so emotional? I keep repeating myself, but their friendship, like Harry, Hagrid, and how, I'm on the part where Hagrid's been hiding out in his hut. And Hermione was like, girl, I had enough. <laughs> I swear I love Hermione. I don't know if I still haven't like done my research on the fan base, but I don't know if she gets enough love. I feel like even if she does, she needs more of love because her bluntness, her ride or dieness for like everybody that she loves is just, look at me, it's remarkable. <laughs> You know I got a black person stun, bitch. What have you ever seen a black person say remarkable? But it is. <laughs> it is. So I'm on a part. And they're trying to get ha um, Hagrid to come back. Dumbledore is like, I've gotten letters on letters of people saying they know how you were in school, Hagrid. And we know, like, we know you have a good heart. And regardless if you try to, like, if I try to fire you, the people that's writing to me, all the parents, they would not like that. And Hagrid's like, well, not all of them likes me. And I love what Domador says, because it's just a good reminder to myself, because I'm definitely not a people pleaser, but especially at the last year, I feel like I strive to like, I'm always like, oh, I'm just so like bubbly and joyful. Why, why don't you like me? Like it do be blowing my mind, but I'm like, it's just gonna be people out there that don't like you. So I love what Domador says right here. And he's like, really Hagrid, if you're holding out for universal popularity, I'm afraid you will be in this cabin for a very long time. Not a week has passed since I became headmaster of this school when I haven't had at least one aisle complaining about the way I run it. But what should I do? Barricade myself in my study and refuse to talk to anybody? And it's just a good reminder because not everyone's going to like you. But I've noticed with me, this being my fourth book with Harry Potter, since the first book, I've noticed a lot of symbolism and a lot of uplifting with the characters, the way they speak to each other. Like, yeah, they might <laughs> tell each other, you know, Harry loves to say that, shut up, shut up. You know, yeah, they might tell each other to shut up or they might get on each other's nerves, get into a fight. But when it comes to like this scene or like when Harry was uh, getting ready to do the first tournament and Ron was like, you killed it, you got this, da 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 da, I have faith in you. Like the words, of, that's what it is, the words of encouragement is amazing. I think I'm really huge on that because I don't know, our internal voice is always beating us down. So I strive to like go above and beyond with my friends and strangers to uplift them as much as I can. So seeing it in a book is just, I don't know, it's uplifting me. Look at me, like my, my cheeks turn around. I want to get ready and cry. But yeah, I really love their friendship. Hagrid, he has my heart, he has my soul. And it broke me down. It hasn't broken me down yet. But I know by the time I get to the end of the series, it's really going to break me down. Because when I first started reading the first book, somebody was like, yeah, that actor is no longer alive. And I was like, oh, my God. Don't tell me that. Even though it's not a, it's not a spoiler, but it's just like a real life thing of because the series was 20 plus years ago. Good chance. He was already older. So, yeah, that's sad. And I'm sure by the end, I'm really going to break down. Because between Hagrid and Dobby, I'm so attached to them. I know people in my comments telling me not to get attached, but you try not getting attached. I get attached easily. 
<laughs> life for the emotional people to cry babies <laughs> it ain't easy at all man because i cry and get emotional over everything or attached to everything but let me keep on reading but i'm on the god damn my face ashy as fuck oh my god but anyways i'm on the part where your snape just made him move to the front of the damn class <laughs> and it's just so funny to me because i'm like snape and his big ass would be so pressed with harry <laughs> Be talking all that shit. He said, with your pint sized celebrity or not, if I catch you breaking into my office one more time, Harry said it wasn't right. Cousin Harry, the patience don't exist, so don't even tempt him. I cannot get over that pint size. <laughs> Snape said you was a nobody, and then he said you might be laboring. Wait, where's the big headed part? All this press attention seems to have inflated your already over large head. <laughs> Snape is so fucking sassy. Him and Drake would be best friends. Oh my god. Baby, now we're about to get into some damn business. Okay, so uh, let's see where I'm at. I have been reading a little bit today, but oh, we already surpassed 500 pages into Goblet of Fire. But your girl didn't made, I made a whole TikTok about it if you follow me on now. But I made a whole TikTok of all my theories because I'm like, girl, this is the, I'm tired of JK Rowling slapping me with plot twist. Every single time I read the damn book, I think I know which character is up to no fucking good and I get to the end of it and I just, I'm, I'm stunned, I'm surprised. Especially after that scalpers, I'm like, she ain't gonna give me this time. She, she ain't gonna give me this time, especially now with God on the fire. <laughs> so here are my theories. Uh, I feel like I need to turn it the other way. Okay. Girl, in my handwriting is crazy as hell. So we got Harry. Somebody put my boy Harry name into the dog on Goblet of Fire. Somebody aside from we already know Voldemort, thou shall not be named, is trying to like do harm to my boy Harry. So these are my um, suspects right now. Girl, I feel like a detective girl. <laughs> this is a CSI investigation right now. So first we got Karoff. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but we already know he's a death eater. We already know he was already getting down. Hold on. We already know he was getting down with Voldemort. So he has every, um, what is it? He has every intention to like want to put my boy Harry name into the Goblet of Fire. But then we also have Moody, which in the beginning I was rocking with Moody. And Moody still hasn't done anything for me to not be rocking with him. But for some reason, I got my eye on him. And pun is intended, Moody. Love you though. Next up, Rita, a.k.a. Perez Hilton wannabe. I'm so fucking tired of her. She, if there's one person that... I'm surprised, honestly, if there's one person that just thrives off of drama, it's her. She messy as hell. I'm surprised she's not meeting with my grandparents. Okay. Rita, she just messy as hell. She, she the type of people that are, uh gather after Sunday church service just to gossip on everybody else what they was wearing. Stay with the drama. Crumb, he ain't do nothing wrong. Shout out to my girl Hermione with that wax. I was hyped for that. I said, girl, not her getting her the top play of period. But I don't know. It's just maybe because he's just new into the book that I'm just like, we just going to put you up there because you new into it. Maxine. Stop playing with my boy Hagrid. Admit the fucking truth. I feel like I don't know if she told Hagrid's secret, but because she's also new into the book, I got my eye on her. Ron, he ain't do nothing wrong, but in the beginning, he was on my shit list because the way he was acting towards Harry. Then we have Bagman. Although I'm always down for baby cheat or repeat, do whatever you got to do when it comes to a tournament, a game, or whatever, Monopoly or Uno. But the way he keeps trying to get my boy Harry to cheat, I don't know. Something up with him. So yeah, these are my current theories. I literally have 220 pages left. Everyone's saying I'm still not gonna guess this fucking um, plot twist. But if I have to go with my top three people that I feel like that's gonna be a part of, whether it be Harry's name being a part of the Goblet Fire or just whatever might happen in this final tournament, I would say Bagman. I would say, I don't think Rita plays a huge part, but she just messy as hell, god damn. And also, I find it funny how, I already said that, but Snape, I don't know why, I just, I still love him, even though he be talking crazy <laughs> to my boy Harry. But I would say Bagman, Moody, or Bag, yeah, I would say Bagman, Moody, or Karoff are the people that my boy Harry need to keep his eye on. And you know what? Good thing I got glasses because I be keeping all four of my eyes on them as well. Hello. So let's get back to reading. Period. Is Snape threatening to doggone poison this boy? <laughs> Harry, he said, unless you watch your step, you might just find that my hand slips right over the e your evening pumpkin juice. One thing about Snape, he don't give a damn about your age. <laughs> if he don't rock with you, he don't rock with you. 
You can be an infant and all. Hello. Ah, I wanna. Ah! I'm done calling me and my daddy. I've been saying, Daddy Snape, Daddy Snape, Daddy Snape. Come to find out, Daddy Snape was a death eater. The only thing you should be eating is this kitty. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But still, you rocking with Lord Voldemort? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That's on period. <sighs> Girl, I got a hundred and what? 40 pages left. Let's see what's about to go down. This is where shit really starts to, what's normally the last, like I would say the last hundred to like 70 ish pages. That's when uh, JK really starts to trip your girl up. So let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. Let me, let me go on and put never being a CSI investigator on my fucking resume. Cause the way I'm on 595 this entire time, the, I would say the last 150 pages I've been like, First, I thought it was, you remember, I showed y'all, I said I thought it was Bagman, I thought it was Moody. Now I'm like, okay, it's Mr. Crouch. But now I'm like, oh, okay, Longbottom. I haven't heard too much about Longbottom Daddy. Because it's, it's a Longbottom the kids, and so that's a daddy. I can't put two and two to fucking together. I thought I was going to be able to outsmart JK. But you know what? I'm just going to accept my defeat and go on and get to pimp slapping me with the plot twist. Because at this point, bitch, it is fucking 10 o'clock. I'm tired. Of trying to come up with all these different theories. I feel like that's what's been slowing me down with my reading too. Well also this has just been my favorite book. Like I talked about it to some friends. But I was like I love how the first three books. I, I The first and the third book I love so 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 much. But I love how in this fourth book like you see the character development. You see how like the guys they go through like their first crush. Asking a girl on the ball. Like if it, you can really start to see the characters grow up in this book and I think that that's why I'm holding it so precious and so dear to my heart but we can talk about that later but right now all I'm gonna say is girl I give up I don't know who the fuck I don't even know what I'm trying to guess on anymore at this point like <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen but I'm loving the ride and I'm also sad that I literally have like 130 pages left and it's about to be done you see the way I roll my eyes? I don't want it to be done. And that's rare that I feel a, feel that about a book. Because sometimes, a lot of times with books, I'd be like, girl, how many pages are 50? Let's get this shit over with. This and I'm like, oof. JK, you didn't want to do an extra bonus, bonus, bonus chapter? You sure? Not me acting like we best friends. JK, she said, who are you? <laughs> yeah, nobody important, baby. You did your thing with this. Don't even worry about key. Hello. Hold on, girl. Because I'm literally about to... I'm about to cry. I'm reading this part. Um, Cause I know they did say that um, Crouch, Crouch's son died. But just reading the part where he's like, <laughs> where he's begging his dad, <laughs> where he's begging his father and his mama. <laughs> he's like, father, I did it. <laughs> I did not I swear, don't send me back oh, to the Dementors. <laughs> And then old evil ass Crouch. <laughs> Winky, you gotta let that evil man go. That man said, Crouch said, you are further accused. It's, it's the power, go to people's head, of using the curse on his wife when he would not give you information. You plan to restore it, he who must not be named, to power and resume the lives of violence. You presumably led while he was strong. I now ask the jury, wow. Mother, wow, he's literally about to, what is he about to do, like, allow his son to, oh shit, cut the cameras, cut the cameras, I'll see you in a second. So I'm about to start chapter 31, but I just finished chapter 30, and I keep side eyeing, first of all, <laughs> it breaks my heart for Mr. Crouch, y'all saw me crying the night before about that, but also, I didn't know about Neville's parents, I don't know why I just assumed his parents died, since I knew uh, they said his grandma was always taking care of him and like sending him stuff to school, but now I'm side eyeing because this is the first time, even though it's given that Dumbledore is older, they didn't mention it three times in the last three pages. Harry noticed that uh, he's getting old. He looked at his old face. Old, old, old. What you trying to get at? 
I'm like, we know my boy been around for centuries since the MLK days. <laughs> Probably was walking and marching with my boy Martin Luther when he had that dream. But I don't like that they mention it so much because I'm like, is something about to happen to him? I don't know. But yeah, those are just my thoughts right now. No, because why am I cheesing from ear to ear? They're prepping. It's the day of their third Try wizard event? I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> but why am I cheesing from ear to ear? Because you know the parents are allowed to come. And Hera was like, I hope she don't think the dust list coming. Because <laughs> they ain't stepping their foot nowhere on this damn wizard camp. On this uh, wizard Hogwarts school, whatever it's called. But he just walked in the room. Ah! And this is Weasley, the dad, the brothers, they all in the... Uh, Harry girl, fuck some dust list. You got your own new family. Oh my God. This just makes me so happy. I kept saying it from the beginning. I was like, I just love the way Miss Weasley just takes Harry in as one of her own kids. So to see them show up for a big event like this for my boy, my cousin, HP is making the world go round and round for me. Hello. Oh. Girl, we got exactly, I'm on page 616. Uh, I think we got a little under like 120 pages left. So <laughs> the, the smile is still there. So <laughs> I'll check back in later. Hopefully it's still here. Whew. Hopefully. Baby, God damn, I can't wait to see this movie to see what Cedric Daddy looking like. Cause he's so fucking annoying. I forgot how annoying he is. Now he over here talking about something. What do you say? There you are, are you? Bet you're not feeling, look, what, first of all, we need to look into this. What is up with these grown ass adults beefing with these little teens, these little preteens? Whether it be Cedric Daddy, whether it be Daddy Snape, what's up with everybody beefing with these kids? These kids barely know a, sm a spell from the left and the fucking right. They barely probably know the ABCs and you beefing with a child? Pull up your britchers and get going sir get fucking going these kids ain't doing nothing to y'all we need to look into that girl I, I got a theory about that baby cousin harry is smarter than me this whole where they gotta solve the riddle she talking about some uh something that you wouldn't want to kiss i don't know why immediately i'm gonna be a baltimore baltimore <laughs> i still get flashbacks from his ugly ass girl that's that's a jump scare in itself but it turned out to be a spider Okay, my mistake. My cousin might be young, but he a genius, baby. Smarter than me. Hello. I don't know what I expected. But my baby Cedric and my colored men gone. It's not what I fucking wanted. The way I literally Cry! I'm literally losing my fucking mind right now. Uh, I wish I had a man. I wish I had somebody to talk to right now. The way I literally screamed because I knew it was starting to get good. You ever be reading and fuck, okay. I, don't, I mean, bitch, I need to be an octopus right now. I need multiple hands. You ever know it's starting to get good when you start to like cover up each line because you don't want your eyes to get excited and skip? <laughs> That's how I have been the last few fucking pages because I forgot about Skyver's ass. So he's back, and this I'm reading, and I'm like, oh, this chapter about the end. So every time a chapter end, I just know JK gonna leave us on a fucking plot twist. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Please let it be dead. Please let it be dead. What's going on? And then somebody say, put a robe on me, and I'm like, who the fuck? I'm like, Scabbers, old bald headed ass. He don't even need a robe. But I was like, Scabbers don't be running shit like that. Wormtail, he a follower, not a leader. And then it says, bow! Focus. I don't know why it's not focusing, but bam, it says Lord Baltimore has risen again. Girl, you would have thought this man was Jesus. Let it go, Baltimore. Stay in the damn dirt, the grass. Ask a being wherever your ass be at. <laughs> Stay there, poor favor. I don't know why my shit blurry right now. Probably because I've been crying. Okay, now Zach focus. I don't know what's going on, but ah, just now the shit is about to get good, bitch. Y'all already saw me crying to my boy Cedric. Girl, my face is burnt. Whenever I be crying so much, my face starts to run. I don't know if it's just me, but now my face itching. But the whole Cedric thing, that really threw me for a loop because I'm like, 
when they said the Avala, whatever the damn name of the spell is, I was like, okay, I'm thinking they trying to harm Harry. They killed Cedric. My boy was a bystander. <laughs> Literally. And I think what really broke my heart the most with that, even though I'm sure like they're going to go more into detail because I still have like 80, 90 pages left. But what broke my heart with that was, first of all, I thought about it because I was like, for one, this is a kid. Like, this isn't just like an adult that was coming after Harry. So it breaks my heart that Cedric died at 18, 17, however young he was. But for two, now I'm starting to think about my boy Harry. I'm like, the trauma that's gonna come with seeing, even though he wasn't your best friend, just seeing another kid. And somebody that just helped save your life, just see him die in front of your eyes. Now I'm worried about the trauma of like, how Harry's gonna be able to deal with that or cope with that, so. I don't know if it's gonna be in this book or the next book, but now I'm starting to see what people are saying. Like, this shit is about to get deep and dark, cause what the fucking fuck? It was different if it would've been Scabber's ass or somebody else, but Cedric? Damn. Yeah, Voldemort gotta be one of the most quirkiest fucking evil guys I've ever read about, seen in a movie or whatever. I'm on a part, oh he, so he doing all this. You doing all this because you got daddy issues, Voldemort. I'm going to pay 646 and he finally spilling the fucking tea after he dead alive, uh, dead alive, keep playing that damn game. He must have been a black cat in another life because <laughs> player, let it go. <laughs> if people keep trying to t kill you, maybe that's a sign. Get the message. Or we can send Hedwig to get you the fucking message. But now he talking about some. Oh, his mama was his wi a witch, and his daddy was a muggle, and his mo his daddy didn't love his uh mama. You need a therapist, <laughs> cause you're talking to a 12 year old kid, Harry Potter. Like he wasn't in that same situation. Well, not the same, but a similar situation. He doing all this, cause your daddy didn't love your mama. Okay. This is about half of fucking America, player. You don't see us out here going crazy. <laughs> Trying to unlock these little kids and stuff. What in the world? Girl, and it, it is the fact that I'm thinking about this. He out here spilling his fucking whole life story to a 12 year old kid. If I was Harry Potter, I'd be like, okay, I understand, but okay, I'm sorry for your troubles. But what the fuck that gotta do with me? <laughs> Can I not just be having fun at recess with Hermione and my squad? But yet and still, I'm getting pain from my scar. Yet and still, I gotta look over my shoulder every fucking night. Worried about your ass coming after me? When it's your daddy? That's the issue? Come on, man. Come on. Baby, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. This whole scene with the Death Eaters coming and kissing Voldemort is him. Nigga, do you think you Jesus? <laughs> do they think he Jesus? And then warm tail with that broken fucking arm. Now he done got a little, a new hand or whatever the fuck that is. He to tell him some, yes, my Lord, I'll never waver, never waver in my loyalty. Waver these nuts. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But yeah, they getting on my nerves right now. Baby, it needs to be studied. A lot of these villains, all they need is some fucking therapy. <laughs> Cause it needs to be studied on these damn monologues. I just finished, this one wasn't too bad. I feel like a prisoner of Azkaban, and that's why, even though I still gave it five stars, that's why it's not my absolute, absolute favorite. Cause I just remember that monologue scene. Every time a villain like meets their, I don't know, the person that their enemy or whatever, they always got this whole monologue spiel of how I got here. My mama, I did this. I went to Georgia. I really don't care. <laughs> Either let's get to fucking um. Either you gonna kill me or let's get this wand out and get to dueling. So I actually, I don't know why I just said in my head, I was like, I see I got respect for Voldemort. <laughs> Even though he might be crazy as hell that, of somebody that refused to fucking die. But at least I thought he was just gonna kill Harry Potter. But of course that wouldn't be how the series would end or continue. But I love how he's like, Harry, get your wand out. Let's duel. Okay, a real man, baby. He said, put them fists down. No. No, because why is it making my heart so happy? Oh, uh, every time, why is it making my heart so happy that Harry is in, was in the middle of dueling um, Voldemort and his parents came back? Oh, Cousin Harry, that makes me so happy because I just can't imagine being a kid with not even like, with not even just having one parent around to like guide you in this world. So, 
I think I'm about to tear up again. Not only did Lily, but James Potter came back. He said, you got a couple minutes. You got to go get that port key and run your ass back to Hogwarts. Son, I love that. Oh, girl, my heart is racing. My heart is racing so bad because this entire time I thought it was moody, but I'm on a part where they about to discover or say it's somebody else. So I just got to have y'all set up, bitch, because I didn't care what's about to happen. Oh, it's so dark over here, too. I don't know where to put y'all. My heart, it literally, and you know it's getting good when I gotta start like covering up each line. Voldemort him fucking self? That's why your eye fucked up, Moody. That's why your leg fucked up. Come to find out, him and Voldemort over here trauma bonded on not having a father. No news flash, Moody. Just like Voldemort was ready to throw away Wormtail and arrest them Death Eaters, he gonna do the same to your ass. Now go on and take that wooden leg you got and get to stepping before I Avada cover out of your ass. Hello! Girl, what the fuck? I still got more to read, but I'm just like, of all the theories I had on who it was going to be, Barty Crouch! Damn! I got to go on the apology, apology train again. My apologies to Moody. I was talking about your fucked up eye and your leg. He didn't even have really shit to do with it. It was a curse. It wasn't even you. And then Crouch, I literally shed a tear. Reroll that fucking clip. I fucking hate Crouch and everything about him. I'm on the floor with him. His son is literally begging for his fucking life. I need some Disney Channel. I thought Harry Potter was gonna give me that type of vibe. I don't know what this is. This is not what I don't like this. This is not what I signed up for. Y'all saw me shed. For Barty Crouch, talking about Crouch, how could you do that to your son? What type of father would do something like that? When deep down the father knew what type of ain't shit, pathetic, vile of a human being his son was. Let me keep reading.
out of everybody. I don't even, and I still got 30 pages. I don't even know if I'm thinking correctly. Again, out of the 101 theories I had, Barney Crouch, he ain't shit. You involved him more. There's a hot place waiting for y'all. And I ain't talking about the oven, oven baby. H-E double hockey stick. I'm sick of this, I need help. Girl, I'm literally, <laughs> I'm on a part where Harry's reciting the story and it just breaks my heart because I keep thinking he's a kid. I wanted no drama and I got nothing but trauma. A kid, no parents. Girl, I'm gonna need a break after this book. Girl, I made a TikTok, but I just wanted y'all to see this. There's literal tears on the floor right now. Like dead ass, there's literally tears coming from my face, hitting the ground. And I'm still ain't done with this book. That's crazy. With all due respect, I love Dumbledore and a lot of these adults. Girl, my cheeks are red from fucking crying. I really do love Dumbledore, but... I don't think the word is pissing me off. I guess I would say it is kind of agitating me a little bit. Like, Harry just spilled everything that he went through. And Sirius was Black was there. Of course, Dumbledore heard him out. But Dumbledore saying, I will say it again. You have shown bravery. Girl, this is a 4, 12, 13, 14-year-old kid. That TED Talk, that motivational speech. Say that for a fucking basketball player. This child has seen and gone through so much shit at such a young, not only a young age, but in literally less than what, 24 fucking hours? If I was a kid, I don't want to hear how brave I was, how strong of a trooper I was, how much of a gold medal I deserve. I need somebody I can cry to. I need somebody that'll let me just, whatever, just break down and not try to motivate me or inspire me. There's a time and a place for that, and yes, that time will come with Harry is gonna need those words of encouragement to get older, but right fucking now? I just told you, not only has the God has been after me since I was born, resurrected, like he was uh, Jesus Christ himself, but then a friend of mine my classmate, the person who I was with during this entire tournament dies in front of me. And you gonna tell me I'm brave? I don't like that. I don't think that's how we should do it, but it's a book key. Let's not take it too serious. Molly, I always said I love Mrs. Weasley, but her getting emotional for Harry. She's a good woman. so bad. I went to go get wine today. And I literally was driving. I live by like a comedy place in Nashville. And I saw people laughing and smiling. And I was like, I don't remember the last time. I laughed. This book. It got me, it got me. I wanted, I thought this was gonna be a happy. My cousin Harry, I was excited. I was like, oh, he going to his first dance. I thought this was gonna be a joyful little book. This took the joy, the emotions. <laughs> Whew, hey, that's the first time I laughed in a couple weeks, hey. One point for me, a hundred for JK. Now, bitch. <laughs> Give me my happiness back. Oh my God. Wow. Bitch, when I tell you, Fudge is getting on my damn nerves. The way he keep going back and fucking forth with uh, Dumbledore, I'm not liking him. And I feel like something's about to go down with him. So bitch, my eyes glued to the damn page. Hello. You gotta fucking record how sad you are. I'm crying on a damn book. Y'all see that? Yeah, I'm just gonna be here while I finish this last chapter. <laughs> Wow. I don't know 
It's the last chapter and I'm so scared. <laughs> Go back to the dust leaves after all this bullshit is crazy. Why is this part where <laughs> Dumbledore has them like literally trying to um be friends or not even friends just to like realize that they're on the same side and um make up and he told them to shake hands? Why does this remind me of like when you're a kid <laughs> and every time I would be arguing with my siblings, arguing with my brothers, my mom would be like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. This is a loving family house. Now hug each other. And you would always just, yeah, okay, done. Love you, love you. It was just the quickest hug, the quickest handshake. Just to please your parents. Why, and I don't know why that's just making me laugh. Because I can just imagine Snape like, for Potter, I guess. And just shake his hand and keep on going. I love it, I love it. Damn, so I'm also, girl, I'm literally at the park. I'm like, I need some sunshine to finish up this last chapter and a half. But I also forgot that Harry, um, when Cedric was like, nah, the trophy is yours or whatever, Harry was like, no, let's both take it. So not only is it sad that Harry saw, a kid saw another kid die in front of them, but Harry is gonna probably also carry the guilt of him feeling like his fault because he because in his thought process is probably just like if i would have never told cedric we had to like both take it cedric would have never came with me therefore baltimore would have never killed him uh, and even though it's not his fault like i can comprehend where our mind will play tricks on us and make us believe like it's still our far fault or the what if what if so damn this gonna be this next book is gonna be tough for me Especially if they show Harry dealing with everything. I hope it just don't just gloss over and just be like, okay, next year he's back happy with his friends. Like, I think that'll really have this series really stick out to me and make it impactful in the point of like them showcasing the the grievance, the ups, the downs, the that's so beautiful moments of life. Cause wow, okay, this is. <laughs> this is more than what I signed up for. Like I said in my TikTok, I was expecting them Disney Channel, cute little <laughs> one, two, three, cute little book or whatever, whimsical and go on about my life. But <laughs> as you can see, the bags under my eyes is letting you know your girl has been crying. I have been losing sleep. I feel like I want to start crying again, girl. But I just really need to finish. I literally got 13 pages left. Let's just finish this. And if I want to break down and cry in my car afterwards, <laughs> we can do that. But let me push through these last 13 pages. Hello. God damn. I'm on page 720. <laughs> After dealing with all this shit, my cousin Harry got to go back to the dust list. God damn. Oh. Just when I thought shit couldn't get worse, so he ain't gonna be able to even deal with this trauma. Lord, with them, the dust leave big hungry ass. Uh, Lord, my boy, I, my boy Harry, the, the world don't let up on him at all. Uh, he couldn't go stay with the Weasleys. Well, isn't that funny? Rita Skeeter 
It's actually a bug. How ironic. She's a bug that stay bugging people. Hello. Ooh, what the fuck was that? That sound like a bug. But anyways, I love how Hermione was like, Hermione is a ride or die. Hermione and Molly are my girls. Hermione said, Rita Skeet ain't gonna be bothering us anymore. And you're like, why? How did you find out? Hermione gonna do what she gotta do. Don't ever get between a woman and her book. Cause just know she know a lot of shit. Hello. Wait, not only is Rita Skeeter a bug, a beetle, <laughs> but Hermione got her in the damn jar right now. I'm done. <laughs> Hermione said, I'm dead the fuck up. Not only you talking about me, but my friends. Yeah, let's Avada Karada that ass into a jar. Hello. Or Expelliarmus. My cousin Harry Potter gotta be the realest one. Not only is it warm in my heart <laughs> that he gave the money to Fred and George, and which if you know me, I always say my videos, Fred and George are my favorite, 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 favorite side characters. I just think they're so funny, they're just so real, and they love to just stir trouble. You always need those characters. But not only did he give them the money, and then Fred and George are like, are you mental? Da -da -da. But you know them. <laughs> they like me, we gonna take the money. I'm actually one time, do you need it? Are you sure? After that, it's mine. Hello. <laughs> I'm not gonna bend over backwards and say, nah, it's good. But anyways, I love how uh, Harry also mentions, give my boy Ron some new ropes, but say it's from you. <laughs> Name a better character. <laughs> Name somebody sweeter than my cousin. Don't name them in the comments. Don't even do it. <laughs> Cause I get to squaring up with you. Hello. Hold on, but we on the final page. Uncle Vernon. Damn, how old is he? <laughs> it ain't time for him to hit the hay and go up to see Jesus. Damn. Uncle Vernon was waiting behind the barrier. Mrs. Weasley was close by him. She hugged Harry very tightly when she saw him and whispered in his ear, I think Dumbledore will let you come to us later in the summer. Keep in touch, Harry. I love Molly. See you, Harry, said Ron, clapping him on the back. Bye, Harry, said Harani. And she did something she had never done before. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Not her kissing my cousin on the cheek. Okay. I'm here for it. She kissed Harry on the cheek. Harry, thanks, George muttered while Fred nodded. <laughs> Harry winked at them, turned to Uncle Vernon, and followed him silently, silently from the station. There was no point worrying yet. He told himself as he got into the back of the Dursley's car. As Hagrid had said, what would come would come, and he would have to meet it when it did. Wow. Is this thing on? Knock, knock, Lord. Girl, it's crazy. I really, I really am starting to understand what y'all saying that these books and movies get darker and darker. Cause I remember after I read the first book, I was just cheesing in my TikTok recap and everything. The second book, I was mind blown with the scabbers thing, but I just like, I was still pretty much happy. The third book, I had to take a day off after reading it just to process everything. And then I came back to y'all. Oh no, the third book was scabbers. So that's when I needed the day off. <laughs> oh, and this one, I took two days off. I haven't picked up the Harry Potter book. Girl, I can't even lie and say I haven't thought about it because bitch, I have been fucking thinking about it since I finished it. But I just want to do a recap. First of all, I just want to do a debrief before we end the video of just like my final thoughts, the last like 30 pages because I didn't really like show my reactions to that. But first, I just got to say power not only to the people, but power to the powder heads because <laughs> how the hell? At my big old, uh, well, y'all don't need to know age. For my mind to be blown, for me to, for y'all to experience me crying multiple times throughout this book, I can't imagine being a kid. I genuinely don't think like sometimes I be joking when I'm saying I'm I'm not okay or I am okay. I genuinely do not think I would have been okay. I don't think I would have been able to go to school. I think my parents would have tore away. The Harry Potter series of books from my fucking hand, from my room. <laughs> Cause they probably would have thought I was losing my mind. Like, yeah, nah, we not, you doing too much. We know you dramatic, but you taking this drama queen to another level. Like, I salute y'all. I would have trust issues. I'm only, I only finished book four and I would definitely have trust issues. After experiencing JK Rowling, pimp slapping me with plot twist again? Yeah, there wouldn't be nobody. I'd be looking at everybody crazy in life. I couldn't trust y'all one bit. But with that being said, God of the Fire goes without saying. I'm currently uploading uploading my like debrief on TikTok and Instagram. Follow me on there, but um, cause that's when you get to see me like in real time reacting to it or whatever. But like I was saying, 
this goes without saying, which I knew it, but sometimes, you know, when you say this is gonna be my favorite book, sometimes I feel like you can like jinx it and then you finish the book and you're like, now why did I get too big headed? Like this five head, why did I get too big headed? Cause it started off good, but it wasn't all that. But that wasn't the case with HP, hello. <laughs> uh -oh, let's get that, let's make that clear. That wasn't the case. Going in from the beginning, when they were at the, the Tri Wizard, the World, was that the World Cup? Well, no, they were the, when they were at the Quidditch World Cup, I was already enjoying it from the beginning because most of the time, you know, he got to start it off with the Dustleys. So that entire first couple of chapters, I'm rolling my eyes, I'm cursing, I'm pointing up the middle finger at my book because I'm just like, let's get him out away from them. And I was kind of bummed. He experienced all this shit and had to go back to the damn Mo trauma, Mo pain. It's crazy out here, man. <laughs> but welcome to the real life, Harry. Hello. But anyways, so I was loving that. What really had me sold with this book is when... Uh, Ron and Harry, even though that's that's so bad to say, but when they went through their first friendship breakup, like I, I genuinely would have enjoyed reading this when I was like around their same age because I feel like now you got to experience their life experiences. Like now it starts, now it's not just like a fantasy or like a cute like, yeah, like a cute little fantasy anymore. Now you're starting to see your real life experience reflect into this book like if y'all did read it when you were in what fucking 11 12 13 year old like i'll never forget my first friendship breakup your first crush when they had to like ask somebody to like be there uh to be their date like there's so many different things that had me so geeked about it where i was like ah teenage me would have ate this up but i still ate it up as an adult so i love the emotional aspect i love getting to see uh harry grow harry St starting to become, I wouldn't say his own man, but starting to be like, starting to morph into his own person, building a little bit of confidence, being able to, he always been sassy. That's one thing about cousin here. He's always been sassy, but I feel like he's starting to have a little backbone and I'm, I'm weary, but I'm also eager to see him as he experience this sort of like grief and pain of like Cedric's death, the guilt that he's probably going to carry for a while of him telling Cedric, let's like win this together, let's both get the cup. I feel like I'm about to get emotional and cry again. This was supposed to be a happy just video, just me debriefing. But I love that. Let's see what else I have. Girl, the plot twists are really, that really just gets me every fucking time. Cause the way I thought it was moody. Then y'all saw me with the whiteboard. I thought there was so many different people and to come to find out it was Barty Crouch. And I know somebody asked me my DMs. They were like, well, which uh, plot twist had you more like blew your mind the most i will say of course this one blew my mind but the one that hurt of course was the one that hurt me the most was scabbers because i was like he was a part of the family i was over here on team ron telling hermione to get rid of that fucking cat when chris shank knew what was up from the fucking star chris shank said i can smell a fucking rat and i ain't talking about how the way you be alakazamming and metamorphosing into a rat you really are a fucking rat you a snitch don't get me started on scalpers. So that, um, uh, Molly becoming a second mother. Love, love, love that. I already spoke on that. Girl, Fudge was so fucking annoying. And I can always, I remember he's the Ministry of Magic, but I'm not sure if that's his character, but the way he kept trying to, um, uh, hush my boy Harry Potter at the end and claiming that he was lying, claiming that Baltimore back. If a fucking, if HP is telling you Baltimore is back, it's time to start fucking packing and locking up the doors. Trust him. That's all you need to do. What else? Uh, Sirius and the Daddy Snake. That shit was just so funny. I'm excited. Somebody already sent me a um, screen. Somebody sent me like a Instagram reel, but it wasn't like a spoiler, but it was just like an order of the Phoenix. Snape and Sears like in meetings so I guess they gonna be bickering back and forth but I'm here for it hello oh Harry giving them the money that literally that was so sweet when Harry gave um Fred and George the goat that he won from the cup but and then he was like but give Ron like a new robe but don't tell him it's from me I said oh and this is why y'all are best fucking friends because they look after each other and I love 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 that but overall, as y'all can see, girl, this is the one for me. This is the one. I love Prisoner Raskin. Asking me. I've been loving the entire series. But I think this is probably going to be like, this is going to be the one I hold so dear and closest to my heart. Because this is where I felt the shift. Literally, I felt the emotional shift, girl. <laughs> my, my voice is getting cracky again. But this is where I felt the shift. And Harry felt the shift, too. So 
I can't wait to see the movie. I'll do a reaction to the movie and uh, another vlog. Y'all be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram. That's what should be going down. Especially if you discover me on YouTube, baby. <laughs> Go on and get over there. We be popping <laughs> all day, every day. Hello. But be sure to like and subscribe to my page. Thank y'all so much for watching. And yeah, more HP content on the way. Hello.